IIT JE examination, one of the important most chapters in physics we have is current electricity and that is related to DC circuits. Every time of course, we people are getting few questions from this chapter. Let us today discuss about some of the concepts or important most aspects of this particular chapter current electricity. In reality current electricity when we talk about we deal with the concept of Ohm's law. According to that one of course, the potential difference and current how they are related will be knowing. The current across a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across the terminals of the conductor that is what actually we used to say as Ohm's law and we in fact know well the equation for that one V is equal to I R. I being current over here and R being resistance there from of course, we write that R is equal to V over I. In fact, this concept is very common and every one of you can even understand that Ohm's law is not a universal law. That is one theoretical point one has to understand. It is not going to be valid in every conductor like whenever we just plot a graph between voltage and current, we actually supposed to get a straight line passing through the origin. Whereas, in some of the cases in semiconductors, in thermistors, we will never used to find this Ohm's law obeying as it is like. So, one should understand that Ohm's law is not universal law. This point of course, is known to every one of you. So, these aspects what we are talking about under Ohm's law, we can directly estimate and explain by taking this equation R is equal to V by I. Based on that, how this resistance that varies, we people used to calculate. In fact, resistance is directly proportional to temperature of the conductor. When we take a conductor, when temperature of that conductor increases, automatically the resistance of that conductor also increases. What is the equation we used to write for this? At 0 degree centigrade, for example, the resistance of a conductor is R 0. When we increase the temperature to T degree centigrade, let us consider the resistance is becoming R t. Now, in this particular case, R t will be greater than R 0. So, what is the relation between these two quantities now? We write that R t is equal to R 0 into 1 plus alpha into t. What is this alpha again can be written as delta R that is change in resistance by R 0 into t that of course, you can rewrite it like this as R t minus R 0 by R 0 into t per degree centigrade. This is one of the important most equations one should remember as far as this chapter that is concerned. But what is this alpha now called here? This alpha is called as temperature coefficient of resistance of that particular material we call it. Temperature coefficient of resistance when we talk about one or two important most points theoretically one has to remember. This value of alpha when we take it will be positive for ohmic resistors that is one point you have to remember. Ohmic resistances the value of alpha will be positive whereas, alpha is going to be negative for non ohmic resistances as such. This is one point you have to remember. In addition to that as the value of temperature increases you can all understand in this regard temperature increases, resistance also increases for conductors, which are in fact we call them as ohmic resistors that is the point you have to remember. Whereas, when temperature increases, 
the resistance decreases in the case of semiconductors for semiconductors that of course, you can write this way they are coming under the category of non ohmic resistances as such. So, these are the basic theoretical points one should remember as far as the value of alpha which is called temperature coefficient of resistance that is concerned. In the same manner how we can change the resistance of a conductor not by considering the effect of temperature there. In fact, we all in fact know very well resistance is now depending mainly on two factors as far as the conductor that is concerned. What are those two factors? Resistance of a conductor depends mainly on two factors as far as the conductor that is concerned. What are those two? The very first one in fact we know resistance is directly proportional to length of the conductor and it is inversely proportional to area of cross section of the conductor as such. This area of cross section we represented by the letter A and length as L. In this regard resistance can be written as rho into L over A. This rho is called as resistivity you can definitely understand this also can be called as specific resistance specific resistance. Theoretically, there is one point we have to remember related to this resistivity that is rho I am talking. So, rho is nothing other than R A by L and of course, ohm meter the unit we all can understand directly like that, but resistivity excepting on temperature it does not depend on the dimensions of that conductor taken up. This one of the important most aspects we have to remember. Sometimes they may ask you a question this way if area of cross section is doubled of a conductor and length is made half then how many times this value of resistivity of that wire that varies. In fact, our answer is supposed to be it does not vary. What for we can understand? when length is becoming half automatically resistance of that conductor also becomes a half. When area of cross section is becoming doubled then also the resistance of the conductor becomes a half. Now, in these two cases ultimately resistance increases by 4 times then naturally this total resistance decreases by 4 times and A by L that of course, becomes 4 times. So, that gets cancelled and R A by L that remains constant always remember this point thoroughly. So, rho is the resistivity it does not depend on the dimensions of the conductor remember that point carefully that is one area we have to stress much on. Now, come to the second one here by changing the length and the value of area of cross section how the values of resistance of that conductor they vary also you can understand. One I just give you in this regard suppose if length increases by n times then you directly can understand resistance now becomes how many times n square times observe this concept carefully resistance becomes n square times what for L is increasing n times how can we increase that by stretching that one I am increasing the length. When I increase that length by n times the area of cross section becomes one nth of the original value due to that reason you will be finding the resistance becoming n square times. Likewise of course, if you take the next one if area of cross section is increased by n times. Area of cross section how can you increase that one by n times? By compressing the total length of that conductor you can increase the area of cross section. So, area of cross section suppose is increased n times of the same conductor then what is the very meaning of that? It is very clear to say that length is becoming 1 by n times. 
So ultimately, what do you find here? Resistance that now becomes how many times? 1 by n square times that is actually the concept you have to remember. Resistance now becomes 1 by n square times that is another point what you have to understand. Exactly in the same manner, the third one, if they say radius of cross section of the conductor is increased n times, radius of cross section of the conductor is increased n times. When radius of cross section increases n times, automatically we can understand that area increases by n square times. Then what happens? the length part of that one decreases by n square times that in the sense what length simply becomes 1 by n square times that is the concept. Then overall what do you find here this all implies resistance now becomes 1 by n power 4 times that is actually the concept what you need to remember. Come to the next aspect over here the fourth if I say resistance, how it varies with respect to length in terms of the percentage variation of length. I will just give you one example here. If length increases by x percent of a conductor I am talking about, when length increases by x percent, then you can understand the resistance increases by 2 x percent roughly. 2x percent you can understand provided if x is less than or equal to 5 percent. That is the value what you need to remember here. If length increases by 2 percent for example, resistance of that conductor increases by 4 percent. If length increases by 3 percent that becomes 6 percent. If length increases by x percent, the length, the radius, the resistance increases by 2 x percent provided x is less than or equal to 5 percent. Suppose if I say x is greater than 5 percent, then the resistance increases by 2 x plus x by 10 whole square percent. This is the shortcut equation which of course can make you get the result directly without much of a calculation. I repeat once again if resistance increases by 2 that is if length increases by 5 percent or more than 5 percent that is what actually I am talking about if length increases by x percent where x is greater than 5 percent then resistance increases by 2x plus x by 10 whole square percent. For example, length increases by 20 percent for example. Then 20 percent 2 into 20 now becomes 40, 20 by 10 now becomes 2, 2 square 4, 40 plus 4, 44 percent that now becomes. So, whenever length increases by x percent, you can decide the answer by taking two separate conditions for that. One, if x is less than or equal to 5 percent, then resistance simply becomes 2 x percent, it rises by 2 x percent. If x is more than 5 percent, that of course, we can take it like 2 x plus x by 10 whole square percent. So, these are the things what one has to remember as far as the variation of resistance depending on length and area of cross section of that conductor when that is stretched or compressed that is concerned. When we take resistivity of a conductor, how that varies with temperature also is one of the major concepts of this chapter. When we discuss about rho which is R A by L ohm meter, then we can understand say at 0 degree centigrade if the resistivity of that conductor has rho naught and yet t degree centigrade the resistivity let us consider as rho t. Then what is the relation between these two quantities? Rho at t degrees is equal to rho at 0 degrees into 1 plus alpha into t. 
Now, in this regard, you can even rewrite the same equation as alpha is equal to rho at t minus rho at 0 by rho at 0 into t per degree centigrade. That is the equation what one has to remember. Now, in this regard also, alpha is to be called as temperature coefficient of resistance that is actually the value alpha that is representing here. So, this equation almost is similar to the variation of resistance with the temperature. Therefore, whether it is resistance of the conductor we are considering or resistivity of the same conductor we are considering in both the cases the influence of temperature that remains same. So, that way we can remember both the equations easily that is one area. Now, come to the next case please. What exactly is the resultant or effective resistance when resistances are connected in series and in parallel? What are the parameters which are going to be variables there and which parameter that remains constant in each of the cases? Those things also are equally important for us while discussing about different electrical circuits. So, if you look at once again here, when resistances are in series, then we can write the resistances which are now connected in series this way and across that we are just connecting a cell like this. This resistance is R 1, this R 2, this one as R 3 let us say. Then whatever the current that enters into the circuit, same current that passes through each and every resistance. That means, current is one parameter in this particular circuit which remains constant that is what we have to remember. Whereas, the potential difference across the first resistance is V 1, across the second one is V 2, across the third one will be V 3. Then we can now write V and R, these two are going to be variables. Variables part of course, we can identify easily, but how do they vary? The next question is that. When you take this one, V and R are directly proportional to each other. Reason you can understand easily. According to Ohm's law, V is equal to I R. I is constant here. Then V and R are supposed to be directly proportional to each other. Then what can I write as far as the ratio of these potential differences are concerned? Therefore, V 1 is to V 2 is to V 3 can now be written as R 1 is to R 2 is to R 3. Not only that, the effective potential difference now becomes V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3. Now, in this regard, you can write V becoming I R that R effective is equal to I R 1 plus I R 2 plus I R 3. There from the effective resistance in series sequence will now be the sum of their individual resistances like this. One more theoretical concept you have to remember here. Whenever resistances are connected in series, the effective resistance will be greater than the greatest resistances in the sequence out of R 1, R 2 and R 3, whichever is greatest, greater than that value you will be finding as far as the effective value of resistance that is concerned. So, this is the series sequence one should remember as far as this order that is concerned. When we consider parallel sequence of resistances in the same manner, when we take the parallel combination of resistances, in this combination 
we observe that current becomes a variable whereas potential difference across the terminals of each resistor that remains constant. So, what we can understand now in this case resistances in parallel when we take one resistor this way, the second one this way, the third one like this all the three now are connected in parallel and a cell is connected across the system like this which can provide a potential difference V to the system R 1 and R 1, R 2 and R 3 are the three resistors. Current that is entering into the circuit will now be I that now goes across R 1 as I 1 goes across R 2 as I 2 and goes across R 3 as I 3. That means, the current is now divided into three parts like this. Total current exiting from the system remains the same as I. Now, in this regard we can write that potential difference across each and every resistor that becomes constant. Then what are the variables? I and R these two now become variables. Now, the next question is how do they vary? I is inversely proportional to R. Therefore, I can write the same here. Total current now will be the sum of all the currents in all the three branches that itself gives you the value that 1 by R effective will now be 1 by R 1 plus 1 by R 2 plus 1 by R 3. This is the way using which we can calculate the value of effective resistance when resistances are connected in parallel. But all these concepts are commonly known concepts, but very important concepts for us to remember. As far as IIT JE exam is concerned, all these points to be perfectly known to each and every one. Now, the question is how do we calculate the internal resistance of a cell and what exactly the importance of internal resistance? What happens to the entire current in the circuit? when internal resistance is provided to us for the cell that is connected in the circuit as such. Let us now check what is internal resistance and how to use that value while calculating different parameters in that circuit. If you take what is this internal resistance first of all? In the case of a cell, the resistance offered by the electrolyte, the resistance offered by the electrodes which are used in the cell, that resistance we generally term it as internal resistance of the cell. Whenever internal resistance is given, the way in which we used to write the equations for current and other parameters in every circuit, they differ now. Let us take an example. There is a resistance connected across a cell like this. A very simple circuit I am taking up here. This resistance is given as R this potential difference of this cell in the form of EMF it is given as E and internal resistance of this particular cell is mentioned as a small r. Now, how to deal with this internal resistance? If you can become perfect with this concept, you can solve any circuit where different cells 
with internal resistances are connected across that. So, one should understand carefully what is the importance of this letter small r which is so called internal resistance of that cell. As such we can observe that E is EMF of the system. If I consider the terminal potential difference across this resistance, I consider it as V. Similarly, the terminal potential difference across the internal resistance of the cell that let us take it as V 1. What one should understand here is the sum of V and V 1 should be equal to the EMF across the cell. That means, whenever internal resistance is there, cell cannot provide its total value of voltage to the external resistance. A part of it, it will keep for itself, itself in the sense what? For its own internal resistance, that is the point. Therefore, if you take V and V 1 as a terminal potential differences across the external resistor and internal resistance, then the very first concept what I can understand is E is equal to V plus V 1. Every one of you can take that as the first equation. And what is going to be the effective resistance of the circuit? It is the sum of external resistance and the internal resistance of the cell. And what is going to be the EMF applied across? That is capital E. Taking these two, now you can write what would be the current that can be observed in the circuit. What will now be the current over here? If I write it as I, this is the direction of the current. What is its magnitude? It is E by R plus R. So, the total current across the circuit now will be E by R plus R. That small r now refers to the internal resistance of the cell. Now, let us take the third concept over here, what will now be the terminal potential difference across the external resistor? It is V, which now can be written as I R, whereas the value of I is E by R plus R into capital R. Now, they may even ask you here, what fraction of the total EMF will be utilized by the external resistance? What is the fractional EMF? We observe across the terminals of the external resistance. For that, I can write this one as V by E, which becomes R by R plus R. So, this gives you the fractional EMF, which is observed across the external resistor. So, this is the formula 3, what one has to remember. Now, come to the fourth one. What is going to be the value of V 1, which is the terminal potential difference across the internal resistance of the cell? V 1 now can be written as I R, R being internal resistance of the cell. Now, you can even rewrite the same as E by R plus R into R. Now, they may even ask you here, what fraction of total EMF that is observed across the internal resistance of the cell, that you can rewrite it like this as R by R plus R. 
and you should understand this V 1 is equal to I R that even you can call it like this also this is called last volts. The voltage which has been lost due to the internal resistance of the cell. Suppose, if they ask you fractional percentage, then we used to put into 100 here into 100 here. So, whenever internal resistance is considered, this is the methodology one should follow. First and foremost in the current itself, you will be finding the introduction of small r. E by r plus r that becomes the current, fractional EMF that is observed across the external resistor is this much. Similarly, fractional EMF that is going to be observed across the internal resistance of the system that of course, we can write it like this. So, these are the aspects one should have in memory as far as internal resistance of a cell that is considered. But where do we apply this internal resistance concept? When cells in particular are connected in series or in parallel, we used to take the internal resistance concept thoroughly there. Not only that, there is a maximum power theorem. According to that one, if the internal resistance of the system is equivalent to external resistance, the power across the circuit is going to be maximum. So, that also is one of the applications of internal resistance what we have. So, let us take the concept of cells connected in series. When cells are connected in series, cells in series, let us consider here n number of cells which are connected in series across an external resistor like this. This you take it as EMF E for each cell, internal resistance is R for each cell, the order in which we have connected them just look at that one positive negative order we are taking up. Now, this is external resistance and this is the direction of current that is flowing across the circuit as such. Now, in this regard, what would be the effective EMF we can understand directly as N E. That means, how many cells we are taking up here? N cells. And what would now be the effective internal resistance? that will again be n r. What would be the effective total resistance of the circuit r plus n r? Now, we just want from these two what is the current passing through the circuit. You can directly understand n e by r plus n r that is the formula one should remember. But the same concept, when few cells are reversely connected, how to write this formula? You can understand this way, there are again n cells, out of them m cells are reversely connected. Out of n cells, m cells are reversely connected. Then you can all understand straight away this way. The cells are connected in this order, few of them are connected reversely this way. This is as usual the external resistance or positive negative, positive negative, positive negative, negative positive, positive negative. Now, here positive negative, you can take one more cell here, negative positive like this. Then you can understand that each EMF now becomes E and internal resistance given as R. 
but what is the convention we go for? The cell which is regularly connected, if I take its EMF as positive, the one which is reversely connected, I should consider its EMF with a negative sign. So, what do you find here? For every one cell connected reversely, totally two cells they get cancelled in the in terms of their EMF. The cell which is connected reversely cancels the EMF of another cell which is connected in a regular way. For example, if I take this cell which is reversely connected that cancels one more EMF of one more cell. So, if one cell is reversed, totally EMF of two cells in the entire circuit they get cancelled. Now, even here also this is reversely connected that cancels even the neighboring one. So, what you can understand here is when M cells are reversely connected, then 2 M cells get cancelled in terms of their EMF. That is the point. So, what now would be the effective EMF of the system? It is n minus 2 m into e. What would now be the effective internal resistance that will remain the same n r only? What would be the effective resistance of the system as a whole r plus n r? Then what would be the current across the external resistance suppose if I ask you, you can say that n minus 2 m into e by r plus n r. So, this way we can even calculate what is the effective current across the system when few cells are reversely connected in this series sequence. In the same manner, when cells are connected in parallel, what would be the current across the resistance connected in the circuit? So, cells in parallel We now have few cells connected like this all in parallel and an external resistance is connected across this one like this. This is R. Each cell has an EMF E and internal resistance R. Positives are all connected to one end and negative side terminals are connected to the other end. This is what is called parallel combination. Now, in such case we all know all these cells which are connected in parallel, their effective EMF is going to be equal to the EMF of an individual cell out of them. So, we can now write here the effective EMF now becomes E. Whereas, effective internal resistance that now becomes R by n. What for we people are taking up n here you can understand n cells are I am connecting them in parallel. Now, you can say effective resistance becomes R plus R by n thereby the current becomes E by R plus R by n as such. So, this is the amount of current that is passing through this resistance one should remember this, but in the same manner suppose there are two cells 
which are connected in parallel this way. Its EMF is E1 and internal resistance is R1. Its EMF is E2 and internal resistance is R2. If this is the case, what would be the effective EMF of the system? That also should be remembered. If I consider the current across this one as I1 and here as I2, both of course mix up here to give the total current as I. Once again I1 of course enters this way, I2 enters this way, I once again comes back like this. So, in such cases we can write that I is equal to I1 plus I2. Applying Ohm's law, I is E by R. So, we can write the same thing this way, E effective by R effective that is equal to E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2. In other words, you can write that one E1 R2 plus E2 R1 by R1 R2. Therefore, what will be the effective EMF is the question here. You now can write E1 R2 plus E2 R1 by R1 R2 into what is effective internal resistance here? R1 R2 by R1 plus R2. Now, R1 R2 getting cancelled, you are now left with the effective EMF as E1 R2 plus E2 R1 by R1 plus R2. This kind of a concept also that is important for you. So, whenever two cells are connected this way, what would be the effective EMF of the entire system you can calculate using this formula. Suppose, an external resistance is connected what would be the current across that one they may ask you. That time effective resistance you have to calculate, this becomes effective EMF and therefrom you can estimate what is going to be the current across the external resistor R. So, these areas as far as internal resistance of a cell that is concerned, a one has to remember.